Here is a 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE in ice cap exterior. What's new for 2024? The different trims and pros and cons. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna to touch bases with this. When you start on the LE, the ground clearance is gonna be 8.4 inches. Going up the tier, will increase to 8.6 inches, meaning the TRD off-road, the Adventure, and the limited trim, standard LED taillights, and they're adaptive for your low and high beams. Working into the matte black materials that's gonna be found in the large grille that's behind the Toyota badging that goes into the fake air vent, which, because it's a little bit more sporty than, I would say, a Honda CRV or even an HRV, I would like to see some functionality here because with this trim, it already sets up and it looks like it has some performance, but underneath the hood is going to be a little bit more of a sleeper. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder with 203 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. And yes, you've heard that correct. It's not a CVT transmission. So if you are comparing it to the new Hondas, this one's going to be a little bit more of that delight because people were not so happy about that CVT transmission and it's going to sip fuel. 27 MPGs for the city, 34 MPGs for the highway. Now the LE has a few twists to it and it starts off with the key fob, if I can get it out of here, because it's an actual key you got to put in the ignition, which you'll see in the interior. And because of that, we're getting these standard 17 inch steel wheel covers. You can option a key fob in which you'll change these wheels out to an aluminum wheel and the TRD will get an 18 inch matte black wheel and the Adventure will be a 19 inch wheel and the Limited also will get a 19 inch wheel, just a different color design. LE doesn't get any color key for the side view mirrors. You gotta go up to the XLE to get the same color as the body. Towing is a little bit of a twist also. When you're doing the front wheel drive, 1500 pounds. 3500 pounds starts on the Adventure TRD going into the limited. But when you go to the all wheel drive, which comes standard once you go past the XLE premium all the way up to the limited, and then you can get a front wheel drive again, you will decrease in payload. Here you're getting over 1200 pounds. The all wheel drive, 1100 pounds, standard LED taillights. And this is what I mean by dynamics. Look at the bottom, you're getting dual exhausts. When you go into Honda, you have to go up the tier. Mazda is going to get it, but then the price can be five to $10,000 more, especially if you're optioning the turbocharged engine in which it would be a different performance vehicle compared to this. You can only option this as one engine trim. They have different suspension setups like the TRD will have its TRD tuned suspension. Otherwise, it's going to be a standard McPherson strut front and a multi-link rear suspension. The LE is not going to receive a power liftgate. It's going to be a quick release. The XLE will get the option for the power to tailgate. Going into 39.4 cubic feet of storage. 12 volt charger comes in the XLE. You get a storage pocket underneath the floor. It's a spare tire and you can configure this down about two to three inches, which will give you more top to bottom cargo capacity. Split fold, the rear bench in the back. If you're tall like me, at a 60-40 split, that will max cargo at 59 cubic feet. We need to go inside, start up this bad boy so you can hear that exhaust on. manual adjustment for the passenger and driver with the soft cloth interior. The XLE Premium will change this out to a soft tech leatherette and the XLE will get eight-way power seat adjustment for the driver. Headroom and a leg room. The footwell area for the front is wide, storage is maximized, just no pass through, but you get storage in the dash for the passenger and the driver. Satin aluminum will outline the air vents. When you go up to the adventure, the contrast stitching will be in orange. Eight inch infotainment screen, 10.25 is an option for the XLE Premium. And you can also option the 11 speaker JBL on the XLE. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse, got a reverse camera, and the lines do move. You can change the way the camera is positioned. 
climate control, the XLE gets dual climate control. USB and a 12 volt, optional QI wireless charger that's going to be on the XLE premium. Optional push button start, which will give you an actual key fob like this, excluding the power trunk release. Otherwise, as you saw, you gotta put it into the ignition, a little storage pocket, all of which will have three driving modes. It's gonna be a little bit more sport derived. It opens up into two USB ports and a deep storage pocket and a three spoke multi functionality for the steering wheel, seven inch gauge cluster that can go through an array of information, including Toyota safety sense, no moonroof and this trim, the XLE will give that to you. And the door panel is gonna have soft materials that's found where it needs to be. One touch up and down for the windows, satin aluminum that's going to wrap around the grab handle in a medium sized storage pocket with a couple beverage holders carved out. Headroom and leg room. Storage will be behind the passenger seat, air vents, and a 12 volt. USB ports will change that out on the XLE. Armrest with cup holders and the door is going to have the same materials found in the front with a beverage holder that's carved out. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't completely flat, but sharing feet space isn't that much. Button and shoulder space will be shared just because it kind of contours and it cuts off maybe an inch or two on both sides. As for headroom, not gonna have any issues if you're over six foot tall. 2.5 liter four cylinder with 203 horsepower. Yes, it's a sleeper. It's not performance driven in a 80 and 184 pound feet of torque. The plus though is comparing it against Honda. What are you getting? CVT. What are you getting here? Eight speed automatic transmission, which is going to go like this. The exhaust is gonna filter in. You expect that when you're hitting higher RPMs. Now the LE isn't necessarily the sweet spot for the RAV4. I would consider the adventure to be that because you're unlocking the 3,500 pounds of towing, you are decreasing your payload, but you're also getting standard all wheel drive, which is going to not sit fuel like this. So if you're considering a hybrid trim, this would be the sweet spot unless you're wanting to get some features because the XLE goes a little bit further. You'll get two USB ports in the back instead of the 12 volt that's with this. LE plus a moonroof. Now you can option features on the LE, so that is a nice thing, but you're talking two, three grand of a difference from this to the XLE and maybe a thousand ish here or there for the premium for the XLE. Personally, I would go at least to the XLE premium because then I can get the soft tech seats and I'm getting the QI wireless charger. And what's new for the year? Well, you're gonna get that army green, which is going to be on the adventure in the TRD, and you can also option a two-tone. Everything else is a carryover in which the big problem that I have on the interior of the RAV4 is this infotainment screen. It's still a standard eight inch and it comes out of the dash in which they could have changed the configuration because they do have a lot going on even though they're still providing cargo capacity. But if you go into the XLE premium, get this, you're gonna get over 10 inches of an infotainment screen. That's an option. Now let's face it, it's not gonna have the wow factor of a Mazda turbocharged engine, but the nice thing here is you're sipping fuel, whereas you're not gonna be doing that with the Mazda if you go into the Volkswagen. It's gonna be a little bit slower variant. You're gonna feel that it's a little bit slower. Turn radius at a stop point is about two lanes, which isn't too bad. Let's rock and roll. pros about the vehicle is the price and the MPGs. Stopping, you can do so on a dime if you have to, and you have plenty of cargo capacity, and towing capacity is still better than Honda with the front wheel drive. Cons, it's going to be a little bit smaller for the seats. So if you are taller, your legs are going to go more forward, and sitting in the back, your legs kind of sit upwards, and it's a little bit more smaller of a cushion for the buttocks area. Also, the storage in the door pocket, because this is kind of one of those vehicles that just sell a lot. The LE and the XLE are one of their top sellers. I would like to see a little bit more storage in the door pockets because this is still a family vehicle and you're hovering the $30,000 price point, you need as much storage capacity and charging capacity as possible for an everyday use vehicle. Another con is going into the gauge cluster. You're getting the seven inch digital reader, however, I'm fine with just an analog reader or just throw it all digital. Don't put this little digital reader just into the center to kind of make it look a little bit more up to date. 
And one area that they could have reworked is putting the pass through, so therefore giving you that extra storage if they didn't want to change the storage in the door pocket. Also, the armrest areas, they're soft, but they're not going to be as soft going into a Mazda in which the pricing isn't too far off. It is more soft than the Honda because everywhere is going to be more plastic materials. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gettle Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for our car review.